let's see. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Momentum Monday with me, Emily McHugh, your supercharged coach. And so happy to have you today and look forward to our topic, which, which is the three tips to design your remote routine. Now, many of us with the pandemic and everything have to work at home remotely. Some of us have worked remotely most of our careers. I happen to be one of those people. I'm very accustomed to working remotely. However, it still has its challenges. And today we're going to address how you can design a routine that's more productive or that's more helpful to you to achieve your goals. So how does that sound to you today? Well, I hope it sounds good because we're going to go right into this topic. But before we do, before we do, I have to remind you to do this. I need you to come in here and subscribe, if you, especially if you're following me on YouTube at Supercharge Coach. Please do the thumbs up, like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the bell. That's really important. Get the word out and let people know about the channel and you guys too so that you do not miss any episodes. So without any further ado, let us jump right into our topic today of three tips to design your remote routine. All right, so here we go. Yeah, here we go, here we go. So we're going to start off asking some questions. All right, you may be asking yourself some questions like, what does your remote routine look like? And this is a conversation that came up in our Supercharge Club recently, and I had this discussion and I thought I would do a little bit more amplification on the topic today because it's something that a lot of people are thinking about and it's important to many people. So do you ever find yourself easily distracted by all the things inside your house that you could be doing? You could either mop, you could do mop the floor, you could do the dishes, you could mow the lawn. I don't know. There's so many things. And when you're at home, you see, and you could do the laundry. That, that's always a clarion call. The laundry is waiting to be done because you can never you know, do enough laundry. So there's always something to do and it could get very distracting. And there are things that they need to be done, by the way. Who doesn't need to wash the dishes and do the laundry? So you can always justify it and say it needs to be done. But a lot of things needs, needs to be done, but what do you do first? And what's the priority of doing those things? So do you ever also, this can also translate into struggling with how you transition from working in a nine to five routine to remote work at home. And this whole, everything is connected. So we want to know how do we optimize this, this opportunity that we have. You're given this freedom to create this environment for yourself, going from maybe a structured environment where, that you might be coming from. When you go into an office, everything's laid out for you. You don't have to figure out a lot of things, you just have to sit there and do your work. But when you come home, you have to organize your environment so that it is productive and you could actually achieve your goals. So today we're going to start off by looking at, so let me know if you ever ask yourself any of these questions. Even sometimes people who have been diagnosed with ADHD will tell you that these are challenges that really are exacerbated by the fact of working from home. And whether you are diagnosed or not, I think we all have this issue because I know I certainly do. And these are some tips that I want to share with you today. So the first thing to do, which is what we're doing right now, is this awareness, being aware that this is something to address. That's where we start. And so being awareness of the use of your time, like how am I actually using my time right now? And to make it work for you and complement your lifestyle and the obligations that you have. So you have to literally design a, a framework that makes sense for yourself personally. So someone could come along and recommend this plan and the other plan, but you have to adapt it to what makes sense for you and how you work and how you think. So being aware of what works for you and what does not work for you is really the first step in the process. The second step is to have a plan for the ideal use of your time. And by so doing, you have to establish boundaries of time and space. And I'm going to put an emphasis on the space because you have to create a work environment, a workspace that is somewhat sacrosanct, that people know 
don't bother me when I'm in that room. <laughs> don't come and disturb me unless it's a real emergency. Put, turn off your phone. Don't let your phone ring. I have my phone on silent most of the day. That's how come I miss a lot of calls. That's okay. They'll call back or leave a message. So don't be distracted. I do not um, have my notifications to receive much um, texts and so forth. I do not want my phone to beep. I don't want it to buzz unless it's an alarm. So you have to put those boundaries on yourself because you'll be distracted endlessly if you don't do that. And as far as the space, try to cordon off some space in your home or some place that people will respect the fact that when you're there, to really allow you to do your work. And I know it's it's easier said than done, especially if you have little kids or you have pets or the whole whatever it is that could be pulling at you. Remember that you have to train them too. Yes, you do. You have to kind of train them to work with you. And I know it's a process, but that's what it takes. It takes doing these things, taking these steps. They're very necessary so that you can achieve what you set out to say you're going to achieve. All right, so number three... Tip number three is allocation of your time slots. How much time are you spending on each thing? And this is where it kind of boils down to how you use your time and how you decide to use your time and what is worth doing when and not. So we already know, like we said before, doing the dishes and all of that is important, but is it the most important thing I need to do now or can it wait until I do some other things? So now I want to share some real specific tips on how can I create a time allocation routine that allows me to do what I need to do? So I recommend a few things. One of them is to divide your day into four key designations. Okay, it could be three, four, whatever. You decide what makes sense. But there are things, number one, that are daily duties. Things you have to do every day, no matter what. You have to eat. It would be nice if you took a shower. It'd be nice if you did things like that. So things that you have to do every day. I want you to make that list of what you consider your daily non-negotiables, I must do these things every day. Uh, it could be a daily devotional. Uh, for me, you know, practice violin, got to do whatever, little bongra dance, something. That's a daily thing that I want to work on. The other is, uh, number two, is a daily goal. Now, this is really where I want you to hone in very sharply. What goal are you working toward each day from your big picture goals? You know, what projects and tasks are priorities for you? And this is where you have to show up for yourself every day. So much so that I even have a little book that says that. Show up every day. Show up every day. Supercharge positive thoughts. Show up for yourself every day. Because this is, this is your opportunity now to show up. All right? To show up for the things that you say are important to you. Show up for the things that you say are meaningful to you. Okay, here it is. So this point in the day, that's your show up time. And you really want to be able to say every day that I did do that. The third thing are, could be daily appointments. You have to be somewhere, go somewhere, meet someone. It could be on Zoom. It could be in person, whatever. Those are like appointments that you have. Where do you have to be and why? And also ask yourself, do I really need to go? Yes. Do I really need to go? Is it truly that important for me to be there? And then decide if it should be on your schedule or not. Because many times we have appointments that we might not need. Okay, and number four is the big other. And sometimes other is what takes over your schedule. So it's anything that does not fall into the above three about daily duties that are must be done, daily goals that to achieve what you want, and daily appointments of where you have to be. So like I mentioned, the laundry, the mopping, and all of that, those are the other. Schedule a time when they happen. But don't let them take over your life. So give this a try and see if you can kind of uh, compartmentalize these different things while you're at home so that you don't always feel the urge to go and do the dishes. No, try not to do that all the time. Okay, so now in... Uh, so that's one of the things that we are basically doing in our Supercharge Club. We have the Supercharge Planning System where we're really using a planner to help work you through your year, work you through your day, work you through your goals so that you can prioritize them and put them in such a way so that you can actually achieve what you want to do. So that's one of the things that we do in there. And so if you're interested in it, I invite you to check it out, the superchargeclub.com and see what we're about. And you too can have your planning system as well to help 
kind of work you through some of these challenges that you may be facing with how to make the transition from a structured environment to an environment that you're creating for yourself and what does that look like for you and some tips on how to get better at it. So please do leave me any questions that you have, your tips, your thoughts, your feedback on what you're doing to uh, use your time in such a way so it's more effective for you and you're able to design your routine. And I want to put a real big emphasis on the word design because Many times we, we forget that it is your life for you to design the way you need it to be for yourself. And even though we all have obligations and things that we have to do, you still have a certain liberty and leeway in how you arrange that. And um, it may take a while to get used to. And I don't want to suggest that it's automatic and you know all of a sudden overnight you just do this. It takes practice. You might want to start really small and then build up from there. Start with a small chunk of time, an hour, two hours of time. Try to schedule that to see what you will do in that period of time and then go from there before you leap into trying to just change your routine overnight because it really is a process. Okay, so let me know if this resonates with you and what you think about this. But in the meantime, I want to thank you again all for watching another Momentum Monday. Again, I invite you to subscribe on YouTube at Supercharge Coach. Please like, comment, and share. That's what allows these videos to get seen. See the description for more links. Don't forget to pick up your free gift at uh, emilymchugh.com forward slash free gift and check out the Supercharge Club. All right, so until next time, I wish you a great week and see you next time. Bye-bye.